Good morning, beautiful souls. Happy Friday. It's week 46 of the Woodland Chronicles. And uh, it's a very beautiful, crispy morning. It has now got to the time of year where it is definitely full thermal season. It's a couple of degrees above freezing. All the leaves are turning. We've had lots and lots of rain in the UK. No doubt they shall probably still be trying to enforce a hose pipe ban <laughs> at some point. But that that is just an indication of, of the polarities and other amusing things that we've got going on. So I want to kind of continue the talk a little bit about light integration, what we're doing at the moment. I'm going to be running my own one hour workshop on the 30th November of November looking at how to assist us with integrating the light and this will be based on my own personal experience as well as, well as kind of an assessment of the field which is basically the stories and the communications that I receive and I, I hear from you lovely souls and um, again if you've if you've heard me previously this is a drum that I've been beating for a while we've never had a year like we've just had with the that we've just experienced I mean it's it's drawing to a close now the next spiritual date of importance is the 1212 I'm going to be working with Diana on that date I'm with Lavisa and Anna Indra Larson on the on the 10th so lots of exciting stuff coming on coming up it'll be online and it will also be very relevant to what we're personally experiencing. But I'm still integrating. I'm still integrating the incredible light that we've all received over the period of the last three months or so. I'm also integrating after travelling and presenting more than, more than I have done for quite a long, quite a long time. And it's it's been such a beautiful experience because what it's it's one thing working online, okay? You're listening to me online, your the, the the platform that I'm using, YouTube, Facebook, or if you attend a a workshop, which my mistake just a minute, I said Zoom, it's not Zoom anymore, it's YouTube Live. Um, this this is a, it's a energy transference via. An online medium which is is incredibly powerful and I'll tell a little story about kind of the the power of energy transference particularly by a crystal in a minute so the the actual the joy of meeting people in in physical allows me to really see where we are and how we've all come because many years ago many of us were just kind of being buffeted around by this ascension process blown in one direction blown in the other direction barely able to kind of ground or even have a perception of what's actually occurring or going to be occurring on this world and what's very different now is we all know where we are majority of us are having a challenging time integrating but we know okay we, we we've had those we've had the directives or what could even be described as the marching orders from our higher selves our monads about what what is going on on this planet and we've all got a target now okay whereas previously it was like hey the vibrations rising what's happening it's it's great Oh, there's another stargate or another portal or another archangel energy connecting with earth now we all know that there's a purpose we've got another nine years to see the expanse of this change on our world before we move into the target date of 2032 which ultimately sees the completion of the shift from 3d to 5d <coughs> Now I've spoken a few times about what life in 5D is going to look like and I answered also the question in my live events about are we all going to get shipped off to another planet to enjoy the fifth dimension you know like 
with jokes about the 5D, you know, where I'm off to 5D Butlins. I'm leaving Earth. I'm leaving all of these dense vibrations behind. I'm going away to a far off place where it's all heart centered and everything's lovely. And that's not what that's not what's happening. We're doing it here. OK, contrary to some popular beliefs, there isn't a there isn't an alternative destination. The place that we are embodying the fifth dimension is here. It's within you. OK, so you are that shift into 5D. The whole planet around us, the trees, the plants, the the animals, the actual physical fabric and structure of our world has risen in frequency and is doing so quite relentlessly. OK, so when we see all of this kind of karma and all of this negative energy being released from the land, that's being done with a purpose. It has it has. Gaia has a mission. She she's chosen to shift from being a third dimensional school into being a fifth dimensional one. So we're going to continue learning at that frequency. But we won't have the the potential for the destructive um, aspects of the third dimension around us as we as we've experienced for the last 10,000 years. If you look at it from a point of view that it's it's the ego of man and woman in in some cases that have created the potential dis the potential destruction of this planet multiple times over and i think you know you we, you'll have all heard of one story or another where you've you've um been presented with the scenario of an ascended master perhaps commander ashtar perhaps lord katumi any one of the members of the standing intergalactic council actually intervening because human beings are about to wipe wipe themselves out wipe themselves off clean off the face of the planet and looking at the previous timelines it would have been very easy to do so okay so on many occasions we've been halted we've been stopped and there was i can always remember hearing i don't know what i don't know what the source is but years ago hearing about the underground nuclear tests and the particular ones I mean, who who thought about doing that? Who thought about letting off nuclear bombs underneath the planet? I, it's things like that, that that do stagger me slightly when I when I think about it. But anyhow, this was occurring, I think, in India, and this the, the underground nuclear pro testing program was going on, and they were just about to let one off that was going to do. A, it was going to cause real problems. It was probably going to destabilise Mother Earth off her axis, um, carbonise multiple um, multiple lay systems, just do untold untold damage. Not to mention the the kind of the nuclear radiation that is created by these. And all of a sudden, as they were about to embark upon this test, the government the the, the government officials were suddenly very shocked to see a human figure appear in the room and this human figure um, I've no idea of what this what the description but it, I, I always see someone looking like a little bit like Serapis Bay in the in the very regal white and gold robes turning up and this ascended master approached the two officials that were running this explosive testing program and showed them a book basically let them read from this big black book or gold book or whatever they were carrying and the second they read the contents of the book or saw what was written in there the test was cancelled so that was an intervention and that's happened on multiple occasions we've been nearly allowed to go down the road of self-destruction but it's been prevented so everything that we've experienced in this third dimensional school has been fully orchestrated but due to the fact it's 3D we've had the 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 we've had our own will and and make our own choices intervention has had to occur because the vibration has been so low alongside the level of consciousness that it could have quite easily gone very very wrong so mother earth is quite I mean, we can't really blame her for this has quite wisely decided that the school on her 
turf is now going to be a fifth dimensional one. You and I are part of that, which is why we're raising our frequency so hard. It feels like a hard and fast frequency raising program. That's exactly what it is. Nine years left, okay? And that was the that was the that was the kind of almost a bit of a pessimistic like prediction made beforehand it's a 20 year window the actual reality of it the truth of it is that we're going to have achieved that collective vibration around earth sooner so we when we did the big shift on the 22nd of october the main priority of this was to connect us monadically which empowers huge groups of light workers millions of us to be activated for our ascension mission the energies of helios and and lyra and andromeda were also anchored which contained specific templates that are passed to all of the light workers in the field we all carry it okay so this is now a rolling ball in progress and the best part about it was a huge amount of negative energy or karma that was cleared from Mother Earth. Something, it was over 25%, which eliminates so many of the lower potentials and the timelines. So all of these different potentials based on group consciousness, the lower frequency ones, the ones where we could potentially stuff this entire thing up and go back to, go back to zero, go back to the start again. Those have been removed, so we're on one singular forward moving trajectory now into the golden age. But because we've taken that decision and because our vibrations are rising so quickly, it's putting an immense amount of pressure on our physical. And I had the, I had the absolute pleasure of being interviewed by Sarah Chave the other day and it's called the New Earth Podcast. It's actually the post before this one on my Facebook and my YouTube and I'm talking about my own personal experience with anchoring the light, the training that I had to do for that because even though I didn't realise it at the time that's what I was doing. I was enabling my body to hold these frequencies much higher than I actually need, really needed to at the time. It's almost like I was treating it a little bit like a, like training for a marathon that I didn't really know that I was running. It was, it was interesting stuff. So let's give him another swig of coffee. So the next important date that we have is the 12-12. And between the 12-12 and the 21st of December is yet another high frequency and very important window of energy. <laughs> so what are we going to be doing if we're already integrating what we've already received? How do we go about doing this? Because this doesn't just affect, it doesn't affect kind of the, the more, the newbies on the light path. It, it, it involves all of us collectively as a unified light field to be holding and stabilizing this for ourselves and for one another. And I was reminded at the beginning of the year, the shift in functionality of the, the members of the Golden Robe. I don't know if you remember that far back, but many of us, myself included, used to be members of the, the primary um, order of the Golden Robe, Brotherhood of the Golden Robe. And that obviously, Brotherhood's just, uh, it include, includes many, many divine feminine souls as well. Whereas the golden robe was donned prior to the incarnation to assist with alchemizing the pain of the world. Now, in, in, in all circumstances, that usually involves taking that pain on. It can be taken on karmically, it can be taken on physically, it can be taken on structurally, so you have extra super duper challenging conditions to work through in order to alchemize this pain and of course there's been a huge amount of pain on planet earth over particularly in the last 10,000 years it's be it's it really has been um quite exceptional so in january we looked at like almost like a changing of roles 
and those that still wish to participate in being members of the golden robe donned a robe of different frequency and that frequency was was instigated as a support unit for all of the light workers here so instead of us just having our individual vibration to consider we are part of a collective support unit now many of us gratefully and very rapidly took the opportunity to hang the golden robe up and were commended for the years of extremely um, intensive service that, that wearing the, the primary robe actually involved. I mean, it was hard work. And so the new golden robe involves being able to hold higher frequencies of light stay in, a, in a stable form, meaning that yes, you can really feel that light. It might create physical symptoms within you, it might be triggering the nervous system, you might be having to do extra clearing within the emotional and the mental bodies, but ultimately you can sustain that vibration, even if it means that you have to make cutbacks or changes to the way that you operate. And this has been very much my experience, and that's what I was talking about during the podcast, is how that particular day the 22nd of October affected me and how I was shown my body doing what it could, doing everything that it could to hold that light. But even even with all of the focus and the training and the, I have been pretty disciplined, but there's also aspects of me that have been very kind of um, slack in my application. I'm, I'm always the first to admit that. Um, I was shown very clearly the areas of my body that needed to be attended to. And of course, as many, many of us have experienced over the years, sacral, okay? So the sacral chakra, it's, it's, I've, 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 I've identified what I would call problem chakras over the years. And that, that's part of the 12 chakra system, the primary Atlantean 12 chakra system that we're all using on this planet now. And the problem chakras consist of the third eye, the throat, the solar plexus, the altar major at the back of the neck, bit of a new addition, and the sacral. Okay, so the third eye is always, you know, I, the amount of times I hear people go, my third eye's broken, it doesn't work, I've, I've blown it up, or, or something's wrong with my third eye because we all have a preconception of what we should a be able to see or perceive with the third eye and inevitably the the not working third eye is just simply perceiving something that is not within your you know bandwidth of perception so you might be a lot more clairsentient than you realize but you want to be clairvisual or you want to be able to hear the ascended masters and the angels but you can't you feel them so in many times we're expecting the third eye to do a job that it's actually not geared up to do. That, however, will change and balance out in the future so that we have a nice range of sensory balances. But ultimately, at this moment in time, the third eye will be kitted up to do the job that you are most suited to do. And the throat, we all know what's been going on with the throat. We've been releasing the Atlantean collar and there has been so many layers of that coming off. And finally, the, the main bulk of that was released at the Lion's Gate this year with the opening also of the higher heart. But there's still all of the kind of the shadow, almost what you see like the shadow of the collar that's been left within the throat. And we're still clearing that and probably will be for some time. The altar major, lots of us are talking about the, the kind of the, almost the pain of the altar major at the back of the neck. It used to plug us into three into the third dimension like a, a cord or a cable just like the one that you saw in the matrix when neo kind of woke up and he's he's in that embryonic state attached to this machine the solar plexus many of us say that the solar plexus is it's almost a little bit it can be a little bit treacherous but by picking up energies that we don't want when in actual fact it's down to our ability to program our solar plexus 
with what we want it to receive. So we tell the solar plexus what it's looking for because it sends out all of these pulses of, it's, it photographs, our solar plexus photographs our surroundings and comes back with a report for us on what, what it's expecting us to need to hear from it. So the solar plexus has been geared up for keeping us safe, you know, looking for danger. So it picks up all of the little microbyte sizes of information about frequencies that are a mismatch for ours and reports back to it. And very recently our solar plexus has been becoming completely overloaded with frequencies that we don't want. So the trick is to reprogram the solar plexus to look for love. And if you, I'm going to include the link from Fear to Love, which is a previous video I've done to reset the solar plexus. And of course, the sacral chakra. How I cannot think of a chakra that has done more work over the last 10 years, where we've cleared all of the past life relationship and family karma and trauma, particularly the divine feminines, feminine souls, and the, so, and, the, and the sacral is now resetting to draw our soul family and supportive relationships to us. So that, those are the ones that are really kicking off at the moment because of this incredible light that's been coming in. And there's information on my website on how to work with it. And I'll also be looking at that very, very intensely on the workshop that I'm running on the 30th of November. So that is where we are at the moment. It's kind of an energy, you know, the, an update about what is happening with our receptivity, with our energy, with our nervous system at the moment. If your nervous system is lit up and asking you for assistance, step back and employ whatever you can to give yourself self-love. OK, we're going to be looking at self-love very deeply for as long as it takes for us to actually learn how to love ourselves. Because if we can't love ourselves, how can we be expected to love others? Okay, as within, so without. It's the first point, it's the first port of call when we're learning to be masters in physical. So, on the subject of love, sending you all love from my heart to yours, and I'll see you on Monday for a meditation. Bye for now.